I think many people are aware that learning to program can be a good, you know, can lead to good career opportunities. There are many jobs for computer programmers, uh, and there'll be many great career opportunities for people who learn to program. And in fact, right now, there's a growing interest around the world of helping people learn to program, and it's driven in part because there are these great career and job opportunities with programming or coding. Now, I also think it's a great opportunity for people to learn to program or to code, but it's not because of the job opportunities. Of course, it's great that some people can get jobs, but in my mind, that's not what's most important. For me, coding is a new literacy, a new way for people to express themselves, to share their ideas with the world. In my mind, coding is an extended form of writing. So if you think about writing, you know, why do we want everyone to learn to write? Of course, some people will grow up to become professional writers. They'll become journalists or you know, a novelist. But most people are not going to make a living from being a writer. And yet we still think it's important for people to learn to write. Now, why is that? Well, it's partly because we think that writing can be useful in our everyday lives. You might everything from as simple writing a letter to a friend or writing down a shopping list. There are many practical reasons that we might want to write. But also, learning to write helps us organize our ideas and helps us express our ideas to sort of take our ideas out to the world. And I think the same is true for coding. Coding is not just about learning to make a living and you know, preparing for a job. You know, programming can also be very useful in our everyday lives. The same way that you might write a letter to a friend, you can use coding to make an interactive birthday card for a friend. Also, learning can be helpful in organizing your ideas and helping you learn to think more systematically and to express your ideas. People sometimes say with writing that we don't just learn to write, we write to learn. That by learning to write, it helps us learn many other things. Similarly with coding, when we learn to code, we code to learn. It helps us learn other things. It helps us learn how to organize our ideas. You know, when you start coding, writing a computer program, you have to break down problems into simpler parts. You have to be able to identify problems when things go wrong and learn how to fix and debug the problems. You have to learn how to reuse things that others have made and integrate them into things that you're creating. Programming helps you develop those skills and capabilities, but those aren't just skills about programming. Those are general problem solving and design skills. So as you learn to code, you're learning general strategies that can be helpful in all types of design and problem solving activities in the world. You know, after you learn to code and then you start to organize a birthday party, you'll probably organize it differently. Even if you don't have anything to do with the computer, just because you start to organize your thinking in different ways. So learning how to code can be useful to you no matter what you grow up to be. If you're gonna grow up to become a lawyer or a marketing manager or a community organizer or a politician, no matter what you grow up to be, coding can help you organize your thinking and become a good problem solver and, des and designer that can be helpful in all types of different things you do. To support people learning to code, and to make it accessible to a wide range of people, we developed a new programming language called Scratch. So Scratch is a language we developed to make it easier for people to create their own projects, create their own interactive stories and games and animations and simulations, and then share their creations with the world. When we designed Scratch, we want to make programming different than it has been in the past. People have always thought about programming in the past in a very narrow way that's appropriate only for a narrow subsection of the population. It's often required lots of you know, detailed knowledge of certain types of technological and mathematical ideas and learning all types of you know, strange syntax of where do I put a, a square bracket or a semicolon. We made a graphical approach to programming where creating a computer program is more like building with Lego bricks. So on the computer screen, we have graphical blocks, and you snap these graphical blocks together to create your computer program. And you can experiment. 
the blocks will only fit together in ways that make sense. You don't have to worry about this strange punctuation. You just look at the shapes of the blocks and fit them together and see what happens. And if it doesn't work exactly as you want, snap them apart, put other things together. So the same as when you're building with Lego, you get new ideas as you build. Similarly, with scratch programming blocks, you can just create your games and stories and animations by snapping these blocks together. We also made sure to make scratch programming meaningful, that it connects to the personal interests of individuals. That you know, when I first did my first computer programs back when I was in high school, we were doing things like generating a list of prime numbers. And people who care about mathematics might enjoy programming something like that, but most people aren't going to be interested in that. So when we developed Scratch as a programming language, we put a big emphasis on media because we know that young people want to you know, manipulate media, songs and music and graphics and photographs. So we made it easy for them to program different animated stories and make music together you know, with their animated stories. So it made it meaningful to them. So they wanted to dive in and program. They're learning the same important programming ideas, but learning in a way that they really care about by taking their own images, putting them in the project, uh, putting their friends' images in the project, making an animated story about all of their friends. They still learn important computational concepts about variables and, and, and you know, looping and events. And they learn about important computational strategies about remixing and debugging and iterating and abstracting. But they learn in the context that they really care about as they're making stories and games that are meaningful to them. Another thing we changed was we made programming more social. When we first launched Scratch, we didn't just launch the programming language. We launched an online community where people could share their creations. Because we thought it was very important for people to be part of a community as they were learning to code. And the community serves two purposes. Partly, it's an audience for, for people's creations. That when you put up your project, other people will try it out. They'll give you feedback. They'll say, why does it work this way? Did you ever consider adding an extra level? Did you think about adding another character? So you get feedback or you get constructive you know, ideas about, well, this is awesome, but maybe you should change the colors. So you have an audience which is very satisfying to be creating for an audience. The online community also serves as an inspiration. As you look at the projects that other people have created, it gives you new ideas. So if you're trying to think about what to create, you can look at what others have done. Right now on the Scratch website, there's more than four million projects that people have shared on the website. So there's this huge collection of projects that serve as a point of inspiration. And then there's millions of people who are looking at the website. So there's a great audience for people to do. We've been so excited about not just the number of people using Scratch, but the great diversity of ways that they're using Scratch and the diversity of ways they're collaborating with Scratch. Let me tell you one example of what, from one member of, a, of the Scratch community. This was a 12-year-old girl who her username on the Scratch website was My Red Neptune. Everyone has a username. And one of the very first projects she did on the Scratch website was a holiday card for her friends. So it had some Christmas music playing. And as you click at pictures of different reindeer from Santa's reindeer, as you click on different reindeer, they'd play different parts of a song. So it's her way to be creative and have this animated greeting card for Christmas. But then she sent it, she put it on the website and sent the URL to her friends so her friends could then see this Christmas card. So it's a great way for her to share with her friends. Now that was great, but what she did next is what really took us by surprise. She decided that what she liked best was making the individual animated characters, like the animated reindeer in her Christmas card. So she started putting up projects that had nothing but animated characters, a flying dragon, a dinosaur, a horse running, galloping across the screen. And then she wrote in the project notes, she said, if you like any of my characters, 
please feel free to use it in your project. If you want a different character, write a comment below and I'll make a character for you. So basically, she was using the Scratch website to offer her consulting services. So this was something we had never imagined. We set up the site for people to be able to share their projects, but we never imagined that kids would also be offering their consulting services. And sure enough, other people started writing in and they said, well, I'd like someone said they wanted to use a cheetah, you know, the big cat in their project. So My Red Neptune made, a pic made an animation of a cheetah. Someone else wanted to have a bird with flapping wings. So she made a bird with flapping wings. But then something else happened that was very interesting. That the person who got the bird with flapping wings said, well, this is great, I'll make use of this, but I'd like to learn how to do that so I can do it myself. Can you show me how you did that? So My Red Neptune, again, using the same Scratch software, made an animated tutorial showing, here's how to make a bird with flapping wings. So other people could then use it to see how to do the drawings of the bird, but also what code to use, what the scripts in Scratch would be like. So other people could just take her scripts and use it if they want to make a bird with flapping wings. Another project that My Red Neptune got involved with was a collaboration with five different young people in three different countries, and they were making an adventure game. She made the characters, someone else made the background scenery, someone else did the music, someone else did the gameplay. But together, they, worked, they made this game, and they even made a website for a company that they started that they called Crank Inc., a company for showing off their games. So here, between the ages of 12 and 13, My Red Neptune was making her own animated you know, holiday cards. You know, she was offering her consulting services. She was making tutorials. She was collaborating on projects with other kids around the world. In the process, she was certainly learning some important computational and mathematical ideas. But even more important, she was learning strategies for problem solving and design, how to make things, to debug things, how to collaborate with other people. I think those are the things that we're most interested in and why we want everyone to learn to code. We really think that by, as kids learn to code, they'll learn things that they can use in all parts of their lives. And similarly, we would think that schools could use it not just as a separate programming class, but as something that kids could use in all of their classes. The same way as the kids might learn to write in one class, but then they'll write up a science report, they'll write a social studies report. The same with coding. Once they learn to code, they can make an animated simulation for a science class. They can make an interactive quiz for a social studies class. So they can use their coding to express their ideas and to continue to learn in, in new ways. We design Scratch especially for ages eight to 16, but I think the same ideas apply for learners of all ages. I think the key to all learning, including learning to code, is building on people's interests and allowing them to exchange ideas with others. At different ages, people have different interests and work on different types of projects, but the underlying ideas are the same. <laughs>